Kim. You're watching Kim Wilson TV. My channel is dedicated to helping victims of narcissistic abuse get free and stay free. Before I get going with this video, I just want to take a moment to thank our friend Tara very much for your donation to our channel's PayPal account. Thank you, Tara. I think we'd all agree that all narcissists certainly do appear to be the same. We've all experienced the exact same type of garden variety abuse, nothing customized or personalized about it. In fact, I've heard my story come out of your mouths a million times, and you've heard your story come out of my mouth. In fact, I noticed in the comments today that a friend here from the channel had been called a slut. I mean, if I had a dime for every time Trevor called me a slut, now let's think about this for a minute. Why slut? What an odd word to call me or to call any one of us. I was completely loyal to him. Uh, I've been away from him for two years, so I'm 57 now, so I was 55 at the time. So 55-year-old, mother of five, you know, hardworking, often holding down two jobs. You know, I don't have risky, dangerous, or promiscuous behaviors. I'm not involved with any kind of drug culture, you know, I don't act out, um, you know, sexually in risky ways, but slut over and over and over again, you slut, you filthy slut. Oh my God. I mean, it's so bizarre. When I see you guys leaving comments like that, it just blows my mind because wow, was I there. So there's no denying the fact that narcs are all the same. We all experience the same type of emotional disturbance. Uh, so many of us have the exact same stories. And I've heard this word used about narcissists many times. The word is telepathy, and I want to talk about that today. H.G. Tudor does claim that narcissists have a collective hive mind. He calls it telepathic mind rape, claiming that narcissists have an ability to control our minds, to control the way we think and feel. He goes on to state that narcissists most definitely have a collective telepathy. And I'll tell you where this sort of manifests itself in my reality. Now, when I got rid of Trevor, another one swooped right in. When I got rid of that one, another one swooped right in. And I will tell you that though some of the narcissists that have come into my life do not know each other, they all seem to know the same types of things about me. Every single narc I've ever dealt with seems to instinctively know how to push my buttons, where my fear level lies, what sorts of things are going to trigger me, scare me, cause me stress, anxiety, a state of panic. The types of behaviors that I see from all of them certainly do seem to represent the very real possibility of a narcissistic telepathy that they all share. Now, whether you call it the narc hive mind or the narc playbook, they most certainly all seem to have been sent the exact same instructional manual. Blackman too has said in an interview that uh, if you are the victim of narcissistic abuse, you don't need a therapist, you need ghostbusters. Major psychiatrists, I mean, can, top contenders in this field are now coming forward saying, you know, after 40 years of research in these things, I've concluded they're not even human. I don't know what the hell they are. Uh, Dr. Robert Hare calls them interspecies predators. Dr. Richard Gallagher in the States is also offering exorcism as part of his, you know, psychiatry practice. There are so many of them. So this is all a little creepy. It's a little eerie, uh, though it is tangible, you know, in my experience, and it does make a lot of sense because what I saw was pretty eerie. But with all of that aside, I've got to tell you, it is this collective telepathy that they all seem to share. This hive mind, the fact that they all got sent the exact same playbook, this is the one single aspect of narcissistic abuse that I love. Why? Because the picture is pretty clear. They are all the same. If you watch their behaviors, 
I believe this is how you will forever keep yourself safe from them. And if you are still stuck with the narc, I do believe that this too is a protective shield for you because they are all the same. You can predict what's going to come out of their mouth, what the next behavior is going to be. They target you, they extract information, they mirror you, they love bomb you, idealize you, devalue, dump you, and back we go again in the gerbil wheel, just running in the gerbil wheel. I don't see the fact that they have this type of weird narc telepathy as empowering for them. In fact, they look like they are completely enslaved to the agenda, like they've just got to keep running in that gerbil wheel. Well, something else I really love about having a good understanding about narcissists is the fact that they're liars. When somebody is telling you they love you, they've changed, they can be better, when they start future faking you, wah, wah, wah. I mean, that stuff for me now is just falling on deaf ears. And once you realize that every single word coming out of their mouth is a lie, you're not going to get sucked back into that narrative of potential love and the fact they could be getting better. Uh, future faking isn't going to have any effect on you when you know the future they're trying to present is all a lie. And all that gaslighting and projection, I mean, once you understand that that is really nothing more than a confession, when the narc is screaming in your face that you're cheating on them, all they're doing is confessing. When they're screaming you're stealing from them, well, it's a confession. All of it is a confession and once you really understand that rather than allow your feelings to be hurt by it you can just sit watch take notes and know that everything they're accusing you of is what they themselves are doing of course their predictability the fact that they're enslaved to the hive mind and slaves to the evil agenda is kind of funny in ways. I mean, this telepathy that links them makes them all look like absolute buffoons, but there are some realities of this telepathy that do leave a lingering imprint on the minds of victims, and this can be extremely dangerous. First and foremost, thoughts of suicide. I had them. I know many of you have had them. In fact, I talked to a friend from the channel yesterday morning from Italy. Beautiful, well-educated, professional man. Never had a thought of self-harm in his life. Never once had suicidal thoughts. And now has this lingering, reoccurring thought of suicide. Being around a narcissist, toxic, low vibration energy definitely leaves many of us feeling a sense of hopelessness, a sense that all is lost. There's no reason to continue, but this too is just part of that evil, toxic energy, that residual of abuse that lingers on even long after they're gone. The suicidal thoughts are most definitely going to pass. The physical illness that so many of us experience will pass. In fact, I was riddled with illness. My hair was falling out in handfuls. Uh, I looked like a street junkie. I was so thin. I had such big, dark rings under my eyes. My eyes were swollen from crying. My hands were shaky. I was stuttering. I was an absolute mess. Two years out, I've moved to Mexico. I'm enjoying my life in Puerto Vallarta. I am finding my creative path again, and life is getting better. So trust me when I say it doesn't matter how dark today feels, there is a brighter tomorrow. And if you just remember, they're all the same. This is not personal, though this feels like an absolute personal attack on your mind, on your soul, on your spirit, on your body, on everything. It is not personal. They do this to everyone. They did it to the victim before you. They're going to do it to the next victim, and they're going to do it to every victim after you. That's just the nature of their hive mind. That is the nature of the narc agenda. And really, when you consider that, how they are trapped, absolutely enslaved, compelled to just keep running that circle, well, you know what? You can walk away, wipe your hands of it, and say, I'm done with this, and 
whatever happens to them, well, it happens to them, and it's a product of their own disgusting behavior. Of course, suicide's never an option. Self-harm is never an option. I do believe each and every one of us have a moral obligation to stand up to this abuse, to continue spreading the word about this abuse, to help pull our fellow victims and survivors free from this misery. Given into narcissistic abuse, especially in the form of suicide, like, whoa, whoa, no, this is just not. This is not an option, and I know you guys know that, and sometimes it is kind of important to try and step out of your emotional state and really try to see things in a logical way. You are not targeted because there's something wrong with you. You are targeted because there was something extraordinary about you. You have an incredibly bright light to shine, and I think each of us now has this wonderful opportunity in a world that appears to be flipped upside down to help raise a vibration, to help inject some sanity into all this madness. And in that, I find purpose. I find a tremendous amount of purpose in that. I find tremendous purpose in the friendships I've made here at the channel. And I hope you guys do too. Guys, I love you lots. It's not over till it's over and we've just begun. I'm Kim. You're watching Kim Wilson TV. I hope you guys are having a great NARC-free day.